السلام علیکم مائی نیم از ڈاکٹر رابعہ سجاد آئی ایم فرام ڈپارٹمنٹ آف اناٹمی سہارا میڈیکل کالج ناروال ٹوڈے دا ٹاپک آف مائی ڈسکشن از ہپ بون جنرل فیچرس At the end of this lecture, you should be able to understand the formation of pelvic girdle. You should also be able to understand the main features and identify them of uh, hip bones which are forming the pelvic girdle. We should also be able to uh, do the side determination and uh, the main anatomical position of the hip bone in pelvic girdle. Okay, in this diagram you can see that uh, the inferior appendicular skeleton will have two components. One is the pelvic girdle which is basically joining the trunk and the lower limbs and it is formed by the two hip bones mainly. And then we have the free lower limbs uh, below these which are also joined to the pelvic girdle. Now pelvic girdle here is formed as you can see in the diagram by two hip bones. The two hip bones are joined to each other anteriorly at pubic symphysis. Posteriorly they are joined to sacrum uh, through the sacroiliac joint and then they are also connected to the vertebral column by this joint. Laterally on the outer surface you can see that the femur which is the bone of thigh is joining the pelvic girdle on both sides and forming two hip joints. So the weight of the upper limbs and head and neck and the trunk region is transmitted to the pelvic girdle and here then the weight is divided into two halves uh, and distributed to each of the lower limb. Uh, the vertebral column is going to transfer the weight through the sacroiliac joint to the pelvic girdle and the pelvic bones or the hip bones are going to transmit this weight through the hip joint to femur and then onwards to tibia and then the bones of feet through which the weight will be transmitted towards the ground. This diagram is showing the hip bone of a 13 year old child. We can see the epiphyseal cartilage uh, which have not joined yet. So there is not complete synostosis or a replacement of the joining uh, cartilages by lines. Here we can identify three main parts of hip bone. The superior fan shaped part is called ilium and uh, the antro inferior part which is shown here in purple is called pubis. The postro inferior part is called ischium. The three parts joined uh, together at a cup shaped structure called acetabulum. You can see the triradiate cartilage which is showing the joining parts of the three bones and the cartilage is present here at the uh, point of fusion. This cartilage will be replaced in older age or after puberty by a triradiate line and then in older adults this line is even not visible at all. Um, but before um, the age of 13, some parts may join like the lower part of pubis and ischium as has shown fusion where it is labeled as synostosis completed at age 9. Here you can see uh, a cup shape. Um, cavity or a structure called acetabulum which is present on the outer surface or lateral surface of hip bone. It is uh, basically a structure uh, present at the fusion point of the three parts of uh, hip bone. You can see that upper two-fifth is formed or superior two-fifth is formed by the ilium. The antro inferior one fifth part is formed by the pubis bone, while the postro inferior two fifths part is formed by the ischium.
Now you can see that the, at uh, antro and fairly the margin of acetabulum is interrupted and it shows a notch called acetabular notch. Just above the acetabular notch you can see the non-articular area of uh, acetabulum and this depressed area is known as acetabular fossa and in living persons it is filled by fat. Uh, also visible is a horseshoe shape uh, articular surface you can see that it is lined by hyaline cartilage the surface of the acetabulum is known as leonate surface and leonate surface is going to be involved in the formation of hip joint the head of the femur is going to be attached uh, to this surface the margin of acetabular acetabulum uh, is going to give attachment to acetabular labrum and the first part we are going to discuss is ileum ileum is the superior expanded part of hip bone it is basically forming uh, at uh, the superior to fifth part of acetabulum where it joins with the pubis and um, ischium here you can see the light brown colored part is ileum while the red colored part is the pubis bone and the blue colored part is the um, ischium here you, see, you will see the outer surface or lateral view of ileum you can see that the upper part of the ileum which is a border like uh, portion thick um, border like portion called uh, iliac crest the lower end or lower part of the ileum is joined uh, to the other two parts at the acetabulum uh, then ileum has an anterior border a posterior border which is visible in this view medial border is not visible in this view and only the outer or gluteal surface is visible in this view if you can see the iliac crest it is basically a convex uppermost free border of ileum it starts from anterior superior iliac spine and ends at the posterior superior iliac spine you can see that it is thick uh, structure and it has outer lip which is visible in this part an intermediate area which is the rough part and an inner lip which is present on the uh, medial aspect which you'll see in the next diagram okay but four to five centimeter posterior to the anterior iliac spine you can see on the outer lip there is an elevation small elevation called a tubercle of iliac crest or iliac tubercle this tubercle is an important landmark you should remember it um, then uh, you can see that the um, anterior superior iliac spine if traced downward it uh, ends at uh, anterior inferior iliac spine which is another elevation anteriorly and then uh, this continues up to the acetabulum the whole part is called the anterior border of ileum posterior superior iliac spine if traced downward we see the posterior inferior iliac spine which is another elevation not very prominent and then below that we see that the posterior border of uh, ileum is going to form a notch like structure called greater shattic notch then we can see uh, the outer surface of uh, ileum which is basically called the gluteal surface as the main muscles three important muscles of the gluteal region are going to be attached to this surface this gluteal surface is um, convex and it shows three lines which are going to divide this surface into four areas now you can see that the anterior gluteal line starts uh, three to four centimeter behind the anterior superior iliac spine and just in front of the iliac tubercle and it goes downwards and uh, reaches at the uh, apex of the greater shattic notch then we can see the posterior um, gluteal line which starts 4 to 5 cm in front of the posterior superior iliac spine and also ends at the posterior end of greater shattic notch. Then we have the inferior gluteal line which starts just below the anterior superior iliac spine and it ends at the greater shattic notch. 
as well. Now, um, the important thing to recognize here is the uh, the important landmarks and tier superior iliac spine, posterior superior iliac spine, the iliac tubercle on the iliac crest and then we have to identify the three gluteal lines we also have to identify on the posterior border an important structure called greater shad now you can identify the inner or medial surface of ilium you can see the inner lip of the iliac crest on this view now uh, one surface the gluteal surface was discussed in the previous diagram in this diagram on the medial view we can see two surfaces the smooth anterior iliac fossa the con uh, cave surface and the sacropelvic surface which is present posteriorly these two surfaces are separated from each other by the medial border the iliac fossa is uh, present anteriorly and is concave and it is going to form the false pelvis which is basically the lower most part of the abdominal cavity and then it is also going to give insertion to an important muscle which is discussed later Be um, behind the medial border we can see the sacropelvic surface, uh, the upper part of which shows an elevation, a roughened area called iliac tuberosity, which is going to give attachments to the ligaments of sacroiliac joint. Then we can see below the tuberosity and um, a smooth area, ear shaped area, which is the articular surface forming the sacroiliac joint and this is called the auricular surface because of uh, its ear shaped structure below the auricular surface uh, the smooth part of the sacropelvic surface is the pelvic part and it is also labeled here the body of ilium and above the fan shaped part of ilium is also known as ala of ilium second part we are going to discuss is pubis anterior inferior part of the hip bone is formed by pubis pubis uh, has three parts the body of pubis the uh, superior ramus and inferior ramus the superior ramus is going to uh, join and the other two parts at acetabulum and the inferior ramus is going to join with the ramus of ischium the body has uh, uh, a superior border which is going to end at an elevation laterally this elevation is called pubic tubercle which is important as the inguinal ligament separating the abdominal wall and um, the lower limb is attached on the pubic tubercle the anterior border is also known as obturator crest and the um, inner border which is going to form the obturator foramen can also be visible we can see the superior surface of uh, the body which is continuous with the superior pubic ramus we can also see the outer uh, lateral surface of uh, the body On the outer surface, we had seen the superior surface and the lateral surface. Now, on this view, we can see the pelvic surface, which is the inner surface of uh, the body. And then we can also see the medial surface, which is labeled as symphysial surface here. As the pubic symphysis is formed between the two pubic bones and the symphysial surface is uh, going to join with the other symphysial surface. In between lies a fibrocartilage disc. Now you can also see that uh, superior ramus of uh, pubis uh, has same three borders like the body of pubis, superior border, inferior border and anterior border was visible in the previous diagram. On the inferior border we can see that there is a groove, obturator groove. 
and as uh, the pubic bone is going to complete the obturator foramen which is present between the pubic and ischium the obturator foramen will be filled by obturator membrane and uh, the part of the groove will be left and converted into a foramen so the obturator nerve and obturator vessels are going to pass through the foramen now you can see the inferior pubic ramus is a flat uh, structure you can see the superior border forming the obturator foramen inferior border uh, is going to con be continuous with the inferior border of the ramus of ischium and it is called the conjoint uh, or combined ischiopubic ramus part of hip bone is ischium the posterior inferior part of the hip bone is formed by this blue part called ischium ischium is um, going to form two posterior posterior inferior two fifth of the acetabulum the part of the ischium just behind the acetabulum is known as body of ischium and then uh, there is the ramus of ischium which is connected to the inferior ramus of pubis. The ischium is also going to complete the obturator foramen uh, by its anterior border. The body of ischium uh, shows anterior border which is forming the obturator foramen, the posterior border which is also forming the margin of uh, an elevation called ischial tuberosity and um, th then the posterior border if traced upward shows an, a pointy elevation called ischial spine and below the ischial spine the border has a lesser shatic notch and above the ischial spine it is going to complete the greater shatic notch then we have the lateral border which is separating uh, the femoral surface present between the anterior border and lateral border and then the dorsal surface which is forming uh, the ischial tuberosity the large elevated roughened area the pelvic surface of ischium is not visible on this aspect. We'll see in the next aspect. You can see the smooth pelvic surface of ischium between the anterior border and posterior border on this medial view. You can also see the ramus of ischium which is forming the combined ischiopubic ramus by joining the inferior pubic ramus and it has an upper border which is forming the obturator foramen, the lower border and the outer surface uh, which was visible in the previous diagram and the inner surface which is the pelvic surface here uh, forming the true pelvis side determination of hip bone can easily be done by keeping the acetabulum the cup shaped structure on the outer or lateral surface then we can keep the pubic bone uh, yeah, or pubis anteriorly and then we can uh, keep the ischium uh, by keeping the ischial tuberosity posteriorly and ischial spine will be very prominent posteriorly and uh, this way we can do the side determination of hip bone in this diagram the hip bone is of right side the anatomical position of hip bone can be determined by keeping the anterior superior iliac spine and the pubic tubercle in the same coronal plane, keeping the acetabulum on the outer or lateral aspect, and then we can keep it in the anatomical position. Now the general features, site determination and anatomical position of the hip bone have been discussed in this lecture and the attachments will be discussed in the next lecture along with the clinical features. Thank you.